So Joseph gets sold into slavery for the purpose of God. And he needed his brothers to be the haters that got him there. God called him so he would be the savior of the people who sent him to die. That's the God who we give all the glory to. Because years later, and you know what he went through during those years. You've read it. I, I don't have time to walk you through it. He had to go from, from being a prominent spoiled boy to a slave in Potiphar's house. Then he came up in the ranks. God gave him favor with his boss. And finally, he is the head servant in the house. And then Sister Potiphar saw him and liked what she saw. Lord is my shepherd. I see what I want. <laughs> and she made up a new Psalm 23. See what I want? And, and so she decided, I'm, I'm getting with this young man. And she went after him. And this is the wife of a prominent man. You know, she had the wardrobe and the look and everything. You know how that happens with the prominent men. And she, she worked her wardrobe and all that, trying to seduce this man. And the Bible says Joseph was so anxious to please God. Now, here's why I bring it up. Because a lot of us have been through enough stuff where at a certain point the devil will whisper in your ear, you deserve anything you want. And he could have been sitting in that house saying, you know, I'm down here, a slave. I had no business being here. I don't have to worry about serving God. I don't have to worry about, about integrity. I could just, this, this lady want me? Cool. He could have done that. He said, no. He lived with a God consciousness. That's what you and I have to do. Especially in this season of your life. Keep your God consciousness close. When you wake up, I'm going to work with God. I'm going to work for God. I have to please him. I know I got all kind of shady stuff around here. I got all kind of stuff I could get involved in. I got to answer to God. And so he said, no, no. When she first tried to say, come to bed with me, he said, no, I can't do that. He said, your husband trusts me in this house. He's given me, he, he, he actually told her, your husband has given me charge of everything in here but you. I don't have charge over you. I can't do this. And I've served God. Can't do this. Some things you just have to do, lay down the law, resolve. It can't be your, I didn't feel, it had, had nothing to do with feelings. I'm sure that lady was attractive. He's like, yeah, she's beautiful, but nope. Can't do that. That's, I had a dream and she wasn't in the dream. Come on, somebody. God gave me dreams when I was 17 years old. She wasn't in them. And so he ran away from her. And one day, you know the story, she held on. She said, uh-uh, we're going to bed today. He had to run out of his cold clothing in order to stand in dignity and integrity. And then she got mad. Anybody ever met a woman scorned? <laughs> woman scorned is different from a man scorned. I, he, no, so now you sexist, I'm real. I'm real. Yeah, and all the honest women know I'm real. A woman scorned has a degree. <laughs> of intentionality that goes beyond, we're not smart enough <laughs> to do what certain women can do. And this lady told her husband, she held on to the coat he ran out of when he came home from work, said, that slave you brought in this house came in my room to make sport of me, tried to rape me. Here is his coat. Potiphar got angry, put him in jail. That wasn't what a husband in that situation would do. If he believed this man he gave all this responsibility to tried to rape my wife, you ain't going to jail. <laughs> Come on, somebody. He's not going to jail. Jail? No. Uh-uh. I'm going to kill him. And he's not an Egyptian. 
I can kill him and it's like killing property, killing cattle. He didn't think to kill him. He thought to put him in jail, even if later on he said, why did I do that? Why? Because you are called according to purpose. And purpose means you can't die because your purpose isn't fulfilled. So he's in jail for years for a crime he did not commit. Why? Because God is setting him up for in the fullness of time. I'm going to do something. God's going to do something in your life in the fullness of time. You're frustrated beyond belief because the fullness of time hasn't come yet. I came to tell somebody, you got to use everything about you, your talents, your abilities, your personality, your, your experiences, especially when they are crappy experiences. You got to say, these two have to glorify God. And so there he is in jail for years. You know the period of time he was in jail when the baker, kings, baker, and butler came down. And, um, and God gave him a dream about each of them or interpretation of their dreams. They said, we had these dreams. Don't know what's going on. He said, all right, tell me. And uh, when Joseph got the word from God, he said to the baker, you sure you want to know the interpretation? <laughs> yeah, no, no, tell me. Well, in three days, you're going to be dead. Does your wife know where your insurance policy is? Because <laughs> you're not coming up out of here alive. You're coming out in a casket. Um, Cupbearer, you want to know? He said, I'm not sure now. He said, no, you don't have to worry about it. In three days, you're, you're going to be restored. Then he said, so this is our humanity. Now, when you get out, remember me to Pharaoh. Tell him I'm down here and I didn't do anything wrong. Use your influence to get me out of here. You know, you know that's a reasonable expectation. But here's the problem with some of us. When we're called according to God's purpose, our reasoning doesn't count. It's not like God is working according to what makes sense to you. Oh, I'm preaching better than you saying amen. He is working according to his purpose, not your sensitivities. Yes, you would want to be um, supported by this guy who you helped him to get back to the king. Two years went by. Now, you know, after the cupbearer first left, you know Joseph, who was in charge of the prisoners, trying to keep them, you know, their spirit strong and all that. You know he said, all right, man, I'm getting ready to go. Because, <laughs> you know, my boy just, I just got, gave him a good word. He going, I'm getting ready to go. So he, going, he, he probably up there telling him about me right now. So they're going to come get me in a day or two. So I want you all to be strong. Y'all to be strong. I'm leaving, but I, I you know, y'all, y'all, come on now. Do this time. Don't let this time do you. <laughs> A week later, nothing. Month later, nothing. Year later, anniversary of the cupbearer leaving. <laughs> nothing. By that time, Joseph was like, no, he didn't. No, he didn't forget me. That's where some of y'all are right now. You're mad at who didn't help you in the way you thought you should have been helped. Some of y'all are mad at some folks sitting up here right now with your Bible. And mad as you know how to be. Because somebody didn't come through for you. And you have... Send all your anger in their direction. Don't do it. Withdraw it today. You are called according to purpose. Not what you deserve. Y'all got to stop all this. I, this. These younger generations trouble me with all this what y'all deserve. Y'all just, y'all really make me antsy. And all my baby boomer friends. Y'all talk about what you deserve. I don't deserve to be... 
Life doesn't work according to what you deserve. Sometimes everything that happens to you in your way of thinking shouldn't have happened. But now that you are a child of God, he takes all of that and works it together for good, not necessarily your feelings of good, but his purpose is good. And that's what he works it together for, to bring about an end that he has ordained. When the time was right, Pharaoh had a dream. And said, I can't find any. He asked all the spooky people in his kingdom. Y'all, do y'all have an interpretation? Of this? Nobody had it. He's up there. I, and the cupbearer standing there, just like some of your friends standing there. Oh! Oh, Pharaoh! I was supposed to tell you two years ago. about a guy in jail. He interprets dreams. He's the one who told me I'll get my job back. <laughs> two years later, you can be mad for two years if you want. They can't change what they did because you are living according to God's purpose and his timing. There would have been no need of him trying to get him out two years earlier. Why would Pharaoh break somebody out of jail for no reason? But now he's got a reason. I need to hear from this guy. Go get him. Joseph comes up, gives him the dream. Joseph, here's the interpretation. Going to have seven years of great success, extraordinary success, followed by seven years of extraordinary famine. And you need a plan to take advantage of your years of plenty, prepare for your years of famine. And Pharaoh said, well, I don't have anybody as wise in my kingdom as you. Tell you what, you're now second in command in Egypt. How do you go from an ex-con accused of rape, ex-con accused of rape to second in command? How do you do that? No human reasoning, but God. So while you're wondering what's going on in your life and how come things aren't making sense for you, you got to realize you serve the but God. When God gets through working what he's working in your life, it won't have to make sense to you, but he is going to fulfill his purpose through your life, even the worst parts of it. You got to know you, are, you belong to God. You're going to win. You just like that rapper, all I do is win, 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 no matter what. Y'all don't know that. I'm sorry. Did pastor listen to rap sometimes? Yeah, I heard him. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. I was listening to it one day. I said, when I walk in the church, everybody's hands go up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be holy. I'm sorry. You're a winner because you serve a God who doesn't lose. He is going to bring his will to pass in your life through all of the stuff. Y'all quit belly aching. When things are wrong, you can call them wrong, but stop acting like that's the end of the world. Because God is above all. And he called you according to his purpose. Don't worry about what's going on around you. You don't like, oh, but it's so much prejudice on my job. Yes, it happens. But God doesn't need them to fix their prejudice um, um, ideas in order to bring his purpose to pass in your life. He'll fulfill what he wants to do. We got, we got elections every four years. The fresh one's coming up. Y'all quit acting like the end of the world, depending on what happens. When, after the election, there's still going to be God who has called you according to his purpose. <laughs>